Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have a quick Q&A that has to do with face set. So it's quite interesting to see that we covered face set when Blender 2.83 was just about to be announced. And we talked about the whole thing that Pablo has been doing and at the time he was working on the Blender Sculpting branch. And it was quite impressive. And it is also very interesting to see that right now is when we're getting more and more questions about face set. So just in case you're coming from any other tool that is not Blender, face sets is considered as polygroups if you're coming from ZBrush. And for many of you guys, you probably think face set is a sculpting mask. It isn't. There's just a sort of a, a tiny difference between what you get with face set and sculpting masking or, you know, masking in general. So one of them, just to clarify one of the questions is your mask is your mask. You just mask stuff and you work on several parts and you just move on. You don't necessarily hide your mask to work with it later. You don't store your mask to work with it later. But when you create face set of polygroups, which I would be using these words interchangeably, you can literally do these things at any time. There are several times that you like to apply effect on a particular part or just hide one part of your model and work with it. And that is something you probably wouldn't be able to do with a mask over and over, but with a face set, you can. So face set is more of you actually having a selected set of faces and storing them as a group to be used and reused later on. Although these groups are not detached from the model, they are still as one part of the model. I don't know if that makes sense. That is not saying that face sets are face groups, they are just faces that are stored to be reused over and over. So when you're sculpting, you kind of get a good idea of how this thing works. And with that said, let's take a look at how you can deal with this. So if you're coming from ZBrush, you probably have a good idea why you need face set or polygroups as it's called over there. And this comes in very handy when you're doing your retopology or when you're trying to apply a particular kind of effect or modifier to one set of the model. So to get this happening, let's start up with the very first question. It's quite interesting to see that the video which we covered deals with face sets and there's a question of how do you create face sets. So first things first, how you create face sets is simple. We have a subdivision of four. Just go ahead and hide these two stuff because we're going to talk about those ones later. So once you have this here, you can simply go ahead and apply that and switch over to the sculpting. So how you can apply your face sets is very simple. You need to go all the way down and select the face set brush. So once you have your face set brush, you can now go in and draw a face set. And this is basically how simple it is. So Q number one answered. Second question is, how do you convert your selection from your edit mode to face set? That is also very simple. So to do that, all you need to do is press tab on the keyboard with the object selected and you can make your selection. In this case, I'm going to switch over to the faces and I would make my first selection like so. And then I would hold on control on the keyboard and make another selection. Now, the reason why we're making this selection like this is so it will be easier for everyone to see how this works. So now that I have this selection here, let's also go ahead and make this selection all the way down here. Right, so once you have this, all you need to do is switch over to your sculpting room. And once you do this, how do you make that happen? You don't need any other brush to have these things to happen. You just need to go over to face set and go all the way down here and say face set from edit mode selection and booyah, you have this. And this is how easy it is. So if you're thinking about creating something like this, this is how easy it is. And I think at mix up, I guess I answered your question. At the same time, at chuckle, I guess I answered your question. And the next question says, how do you remove all face sets? So how you can remove face sets is very easy. Say for example, you have multiple face sets. In this case, if I go ahead and grab the face set brush right here, and let's say we paint another face set, paint another one, and we paint another one. And you know, you just have multiple polygroups face sets, actually. <laughs> you have multiple face sets or polygroups. How you can remove this thing is very simple. So I would suggest that instead of going in here and randomly playing with all of these features, you know, you kind of think that you have all the features all together. So instead of going in there and playing with all those features, I would suggest that you use the box selection mode to select just that, okay? Just make that huge selection and get it out of the way. So you just have one face set and that way you remove all the other face sets that exist there. Another question is from Chuckle70 asking how you can play with the mesh filter when you're working with face sets. So for this one, I think it makes sense to actually look at a couple of things. I would store this here and open up these two models. So I think the best thing is to parent these two. So hit Ctrl P on the keyboard and keep the object with transform. 
And the next thing which I'll do is just scale this. So this is a model I worked on some time ago. It's a very simple model. So we're looking at working with different brushes at the same time having a face set. So if I switch over to the sculpting room, you would notice that we have nada, all right? So we have nothing that deals with face set right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and create some so that we can explore some. So to do that, I have the face set brush selected. I'm gonna make sure that I have my X and Y and Z. Just make sure you have your symmetry or, you know, in this case, I'm making sure I have my symmetry. Tap F on the keyboard to increase the brush size. And then I will paint. So once I have this there, let's also make another painting somewhere like so. And I might also make another painting like this. Let's say we go in and out and something colorful. All right. So with this here, the next thing to do is if you go over to your mesh filter, which is what we're looking at, you will notice that with the mesh filter here, if I tap F on the keyboard and scale this all, we have the filter type set to inflate. So what this means is if I drag this up and down, I'm inflating the entire model. Now, if you don't want to inflate the entire model, how you can solve this is to go in here and turn on the face set. And that way, you would only inflate one part. So just in case you have a cue for that, this is the answer to it. So you can do the same thing here. You can go in here and you can do the same thing. So if you're also working with other brushes or maybe you're working with other filter types, that would work. If you're working with a cloth brush, which is one brush I think a lot of people need to explore even more, you can do the same thing. Just make sure that you have this turned on, all right? So once you have that turned on, you can go in and uh, you can start playing with this. So in this case, you can create whatever kind of cloth effect that you want. Now, once you have this going, you can go ahead and, you know, just get this out of the way. Another good question is how do you extract some parts? So if you like to extract any part that has to do with a face set, how you can extract this is literally very simple. So let's say we like to extract this part, okay? So you can extract that by going over to face set and then you can extract right here, extract face set and with the eyedropper select and you have this part extracted. Depending on how dense the model is, this might take a couple of seconds. And with this here, we have a simple extraction that we can now go in and start playing with. So this way you can extract several parts depending on what you're making. It's also worth knowing that if you're in the sculpt room and you're working with your face set, you cannot edit this face set within the property section. There is no property that deals with face set at this point. You only get to see properties for the brushes and also options for the brushes. And depending on what you want to do with the brushes, you would find these things here. So there are no properties for the face set. And I'm just going through the questions right now, trying to see if there is any question that I missed. And that seems to be about it. And two more things that are worth sharing are, what if you like to hide some parts of your model when you're working with face set? So in this case, let's say we have our symmetry turned on and we're painting across this model. And for some reason, you know, we'll just want to hide these lovely ears and uh, proceed to just sculpt on those parts or maybe do some effects right on those parts. Now, if you have multiple selections like this or multiple face sets, if you proceed to hover across anyone and tap H on the keyboard, you would notice that it disappeared. So you can tap H one more time and you get to see it. But in some cases, you might want to actually get everything out. So how you get to paint another face set into another one is by simply holding down the control key on the keyboard, click and drag, and that way you can override the previous face set. So this is basically how you do it. So you simply swipe through and you can paint whatever you want. Now, in this case, once you're done, tap the H key on the keyboard and you have it. And from here, you can start doing whatever you want to do on this model, regardless of the other ones. So you can do this for several parts, depending on what you want. And once you want this back, you can proceed to tap the H key one more time to bring it back. And the same thing happens for parts like this. And at the same time, you can proceed to do that for other parts. For example, say parts like this as well. So with this out of the way, for those who are also looking at something that we've just mentioned, how you can paint some parts in to other parts is by simply holding down control and you can paint in or you can hold down control and also paint back the basic one that you have. So lots of options and things for you to do with this if you're considering sculpting and you would like to explore with the face set feature that exists in Blender. Then for those who have questions about this, please put that in the comment section and we'll do our best to reach out to you guys. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.